welcome back to Zach Talks Hawks. My name is Zach, and this is the place where we talk everything CLC Hawk football. Welcome to our preview show for week three of the NFL season. And we got a doozy on tap with Miami strolling in. They look a lot different than what they used to playing against the Seattle Seahawks this coming Sunday. And we're going to go over our predictions like we always do here now on the show on Thursdays where we talk about how good or maybe not good we were the week before and make some predictions for week three of what is just a crazy, crazy NFL season. A bit of a new setup here for me. So as you can see, the, the screen and whatnot, it looks a little different than normal, but I, I hope things start to work out. I'm also going to try to start mixing in music here moving forward for the show that uh, doesn't get copyright claimed. So we're going to take a look at maybe some new background music and start tweaking with volumes and stuff. I trust that the volume here for the mic is good. And let's get rolling here on week three. No intro, no nothing. <laughs> new computer, new new setup. Uh, the Unfortunately, the last computer I had took a dive. And now I'm here on the gaming laptop. Still got the mic, still got the camera, and we're ready to roll here. As Seattle looks forward to a week three opponent. 2-0, sitting on top of the NFC West, going toe-to-toe. -to -toe with a Miami Dolphin team that looks uh, a lot different than what we would have expected just a week ago. Unfortunately, the big story out of the NFL this past week was Tua Tagovailoa getting hurt once again with a concussion. This is his fifth in about four years from going back to his days at Alabama. And uh, I'm, I'm not a concussion expert, but I do know the man has a lot of faith. He's got a beautiful family back home, and there are just some things at the end of the day that are bigger than football. But it doesn't matter what I feel. It doesn't matter what the commentators feel. It only matters what Tua and perhaps maybe the trainers and doctors feel as he continues to get looked at. It is official, though. Tua is on IR, which means the Miami Dolphins are going to look very, very different than what they have in the past. Skylar Thompson is the quarterback for this team. Now moving forward, Miami did sign another backup quarterback, but the coach cited depth for the reason, not necessarily trepidation over what Thompson's able to do. Now, I do have to say, I didn't know a lot about Skylar Thompson, so I did a little bit of digging, and it occurred to me that, yes, he has played meaningful football in the past. In fact, he's played playoff football and Performed very, very well. He went up against the Buffalo Bills, was able to command the offense, run it well. Now, of course, under different circumstances, it could be a diamonds are made under pressure circumstance with Skylar Thompson. Now, now the reins are handed over to him for really the foreseeable future as to was on IR. So the worst case scenario, he's uh, for it, Miami fans, I guess I should say, he's he's out for three games as he's got to miss four weeks of the season. The last week of IR would be a bye for Miami. So what should we expect from the Miami Dolphins as Seattle Seahawks fans? Well, I think you're going to see a heavy dose of the run this week, very similar to what Green Bay had to do in their matchup last week going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a formidable opponent without their starting quarterback in Jordan Love. Their entire game plan changed, and they ran the ball upwards towards 40 times. It was the high 30s by the time they were all said and done. And they wound up winning that game with Malik Willis. Skylar Thompson's skill set is he is a runner. He's a scrambler, and he seeks to create from outside of the pocket. I think this is going to be a challenging game for the Seahawks to set the edge and stay disciplined. They've struggled in the past against running quarterbacks, and unfortunately, historically, Seattle is not a good team playing against backup quarterbacks. This is a team, whether it's Wolford or Colt McCoy or Brett Huntley, I mean, I could name the backup quarterbacks that have plagued this team over the years. I hope with a new regime, a new era in Seattle, Maybe that ghost is thwarted for the Seahawks and we don't have a repeat of many games in the past of backup quarterbacks walking in and torching this team. 
but regardless, I think Miami's going to walk into this game with the expectation that they are going to run east to west quite a bit against the Seattle front, which at times has struggled against the run. It's going to be a very interesting game <laughs> from the defensive's point of view. How disciplined are our defense is our defense going to be up front on the offensive line? It's going to be very interesting to see how or if Boye Mafe is even going to play. He is second in the NFL in, in QB pressures this season, and yet <laughs> he's hurt. <laughs> Much like a lot of the NFC West, we too are dealing with some critical injuries, especially on the defensive front. Remember, Ushina Nwosu still out after a preseason injury on a chop block that should have never happened and went un undisciplined by the NFL in their matchup against Cleveland. They're getting a little thin up front. So I think coaching is going to be a big deal in order to stop what little offense Miami is going to be able to throw out there against Seattle. Offensively, I see this as a big, big opportunity for Seahawks. Last week, Seattle traveled to New England. And instead of bashing their head up against the wall a thousand times when figuring out the run didn't work, Mike McDonald at the end of the game said, I'm going to do everything I can in order to win the game. So if it means I have to pivot and try something different, I will. And that's exactly what he did. He put the ball in Geno Smith's hands and he was able to perform very, very well. Crisp, accurate reads, making sure the offense ran the best it could in order to produce the bare minimum points needed <laughs> to beat the New England Patriots. And this is where I think Seattle's got a big opportunity ahead of them this week. You see, they can go back to who they've always been, a run-first team that depends on play-action passing in order for the passing game to take a broader step and open up and then seeking to integrate uh, Grubb's offensive scheme into the system. Oh, man, with this opportunity in front of them, I really want to see – Brian Grubb and company just rip the training wheels off of what can be a pass first offense in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, you heard me right. I think Seattle should experiment this week against a team that, at least on paper, isn't going to be able to score a lot of points unless the rushing game really takes off. If they can handle that business and it starts to be a blowout, I really look forward to the opportunity where Seattle's just running roughshod over the Miami Dolphins, and they are able to let Geno loose, be able to integrate pre-snap motion, get guys the ball in ways they've never done before, at least in our offensive scheme. I felt like this team offensively sort of been handicapped against two different ideals. One is the way Seattle's always been, a run-first team. K9, Charbonnet, and we're going to try to do that first and then open up the passing game. Whereas a lot of the modern NFL is pass first, run later. Let the passing game open up lanes for an opportunistic run offense. Look, Seattle's got an accurate quarterback in Geno Smith. He doesn't always put up super gaudy numbers, but he's pretty accurate and he's got a lot of arm talent. You juxtapose that with a pretty pretty good offensive line that is right now struggling in run concepts and excelling in pass protection i know i can't believe i just said that but the proof's in the pudding in last week's matchup against the new england patriots front gino had time to throw gino had time to make reads successfully all throughout the game let him let him run loose this week you have a what is possibly the best wide receiver trio in the league with JSN, Metcalf, and Lockett. I, I would love, I would love to see big, big changes on the offensive front for this team on a rare week in the NFL where you sort of know if you take care of business, it's going to be a lopsided affair. You have the liberty to make these changes. I'm of the mind where if the game seems like it's going to be in hand and the defense is going to do their job why not try something new why not abandon what has been and see if this new age of nfl 
play calling is something that can be the normal for this team up in the Pacific Northwest. I, I think the Dolphins are very vulnerable in terms of corner play. It's not a daunting quarterback room over the top. You got to be a little bit cautious, but we know some of the players that are going to line up defensively. I, I think of over the middle, we have Jordan Brooks It's sort of a revenge game for him. We know he lacks in pass defense. He's very slow to the ball. Why not expose that? Why not go after a guy like Jalen Ramsey, who's at the back end of his career playing in Miami and opening up an opportunity for this team to really, really excel? As you can probably tell, <laughs> I'm all in on Seattle trying something new and getting to a place where they're really comfortable with the outcome of this game. I don't think it's going to be close. I'm going to predict Seattle's going to win this game probably around a score of like 35 to 10. And if all things work out right, this team's going to look so, so different on the offensive front as they've done in the past. They're going to rip off the training wheels and let Geno Smith sling it around the yard, give him room to fail, and try the uncensored version that we've been seeing in the last two weeks Brian Grubb offense we've seen bits and pieces of it but we really haven't seen what it can be if you're fans of Washington you know what this offense should look like that's not been what Seattle's been running the first two weeks of the season they got a huge huge opportunity against a team who's going to struggle to move the ball at all if the running game collapses Taking a look here at our NFL predictions, <coughs> excuse me, this past week. I don't know how. I, I have my have my little notebook here. I don't know how, but we did the same thing in week two we did in week one. We finished nine and seven in what was a equally chaotic game uh, of slated games, I guess I should say, last week. We got the upset of the week right last week as Arizona beat the Rams. That was an upset on paper, and we're 1-1 one one in our upsets for the season. As you can see on the screen, we are also 18-14 um, and 14 this year with back-to-back 9-7 -back records. And we're going to look to improve on that here in Week 3. I'm feeling pretty good. I think anytime you're above 500 in your picks, you're doing something pretty good. Uh, I want a little bit more, though, than 9-7 and seven every single week for the NFL season. So let's go through the slate of games for this week and see what's on tap for NFL Week 3. Tonight, we got a Thursday night football matchup between the New England Patriots and the New York Jets. In what is going to be Aaron Rodgers' first game back home. Technically second, but you get what I mean. At MetLife. <laughs> it's going to be a very intriguing matchup we know very well what the Patriots were able to do against the Seahawks last week they're sort of a crafty team I think that uh, they're going to do just enough to make this game competitive but when it all comes down to it I see Aaron Rodgers being the difference in this game being able to pull out that clutch gene of his and being able to muster a win for the Giants or for the Giants for the Jets when they won Aaron Rodgers right now holy moly uh I think the Jets are going to win in a close one, very similar to a game that Seattle played against New England last week. I think New England's going to lose another heartbreaker. I'm going to pick the Jets here on Thursday night. Chargers travel across the country and land in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for their matchup against the Steelers. All signs point to Justin Fields staying the quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. It looks like Russell Wilson's calf injury has cost him an opportunity to be the quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers, at least for now. And they're going to go up against a team in the Chargers that, for some reason, uh, might actually be a decent team this year. <laughs> yeah, the, the Harbonian effect is in full swing in Los Angeles. They are a run-first team now, and they're not afraid to show it. And I think that's going to bode well for their quarterback play. Make your young, talented quarterback into a game manager instead of having to win it upon the shoulders of Justin Herbert every week. I'm going to pick the Chargers to win this one pretty handedly over the Pittsburgh Steelers. Houston and Minnesota face off against 
Oh my goodness! Uh, what was a couple weeks ago a, a laughing stock of a matchup? We would have thought Houston would have blown out Minnesota, but for some reason the Vikings are two and zero, led by Sam Darnold of all people. I really wanted to, I I wanted to jump on the train so bad. I, I wanted to pick the Vikings, but. I can't. C.J. Stroud is just too good, and I don't think the Vikings defense have enough on the back end to stop him. And this Houston offense is going to really start rolling as we continue into the NFL season. Give me Houston. Finally derailing the Darnold fever dream. Houston wins in Minnesota. Philly takes on New Orleans. And what is a scene from the Twilight Zone? Philadelphia is in shambles. Meanwhile, the New Orleans Saints are probably one of the best teams in football right now. And who would have guessed that? It's because their car's not broken down. He's actually working like he should. Driving like a Ferrari there in New Orleans. Scoring on every drive. Making sure that every win is well secure as they thump the Dallas Cowboys last week. Philly coming off of a gut-wrenching loss against the Falcons. If Philly loses this week, watch the wheels start to fall off in the locker room. You can sort of see the cracks start to happen with this team, and I'm rooting for them to not completely implode right now. That's why I'm picking Philadelphia. Man, Derek Carr, if if you can show me one more week, one more week, then I'll have a little bit more faith in the, in the New Orleans Saints. But I'm picking Philly to get the win in New Orleans. The hapless Denver Broncos are limping into Tampa Bay, and they're going to get torched by the bake show. Yeah, uh, there's not a lot to say here. Denver's going to try to pick every excuse in the book to not point the finger at their head coach, which just is truly washed up. Sean Payton... What are you doing, dude? You have every opportunity to score points you choose not to, and you leave your young quarterback out to dry with no run game. I don't know what they're doing in Denver, but I do know what they're doing in Tampa Bay. Solid defense with a crazy quarterback play out of Baker Mayfield. Picking Tampa Bay to run away with this one. Green Bay travels to Tennessee to play the Titans. In what is a bizarro world matchup with Malik Willis playing against Will Levis, Ugh, I I don't know. Green Bay somehow, some way, odds against odds last week figured we're just gonna run the ball and not let Malik Willis ruin this game for us. Vomit on the football and all. Green Bay somehow won last week. I don't think that's gonna work. At some point, you gotta think. Will Levis gets this figured out, right? He can't go every week of the NFL season with a memeable interception, fumble, whatever, right? That's why I'm picking Tennessee to get the win versus Green Bay. The Giants, poor Giants, travel to Cleveland to face the Browns on Sunday. And look, I picked New York last week on this show and simply said, I don't know how and I don't know why, but I'm going to pick New York to beat Washington simply because I feel bad for Daniel Jones. There's no reason other than that, but I'm going to pick him. And then their kicker got hurt, and then they literally lost by scoring three touchdowns and allowing a team to not score any touchdowns and score 21 points off field goals. Oh, no, New York, what are you doing to me? I can't play sympathizer to this team all season long on paper this is a matchup that cleveland should be able to knock them out drag them out i expect a game here that's sort of close for three quarters and cleveland pulls away at the end i'm picking cleveland but for daniel jones's sake i hope you prove me wrong man looking forward through the nfl slate on sunday chicago travels to indianapolis in a couple of teams let me tell you that had a lot of expectations behind them and they are falling flat it is not really good in chicago it's not really good to have a rookie quarterback at all this season even with caleb williams being held as the next peyton manning and it's just not working out dude he's trying to figure out a way to make this nfl thing work and He hasn't looked good. None of the rookie quarterbacks have thrown for a touchdown this season. 
I think that streak ends this week, by the way. And they're playing the Indianapolis Colts, who might as well have a rookie quarterback in Anthony Richardson. AR has struggled this year to really get things going, and I feel bad for him. I, I really do. It's, his highs are so high, but his lows are so low, and that Indianapolis defense, my word, can you try to stop the run at some point, at any point? That'd be awesome. That's why I'm picking Chicago to get the win this week. Carolina and <laughs> Andy Dalton, speaking about rookie quarterbacks that aren't doing well, Bryce Young is out after just 18 games into his NFL career, going head-to-head -head with the Las Vegas Raiders, who, led by the wazoo man himself, Gardner Minshew, beat the Baltimore Ravens last week in a wild comeback victory. I think Las Vegas has all the momentum. There's no way, right? There's no way Andy Dalton leads a victory for the Carolina Panthers, right? Garner Minshew holds the Minshew magic, and I'm picking Vegas. We already talked about the Miami and Seattle matchup. Moving forward, Baltimore. Poor, poor Baltimore. Plays poor, poor Dallas. Yes, we have the matchup of the underachieving teams in the NFL. Both are just hapless shells of themselves. And unfortunately, <clears throat> for one team, the ride never ends. It's just going to continue. I really don't think Baltimore is as bad as many people think. There are some folks that are that are claiming for head coaches to be fired, for coordinators to be fired in Baltimore. That's ridiculous. You almost beat the Chiefs week one. And for Dallas, well, we all know who they are. And <laughs> they're, they're a mediocre team playing in a really bad division that gets a playoff spot every single year. I'm going to pick Dallas to win simply because they're at home and typically they play good at home. And apparently New Orleans is the best team in the NFL. I don't know. I'm picking Dallas to beat the Ravens this week in what is a toss up game for me. It, it really could go either way, and I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Detroit playing an upstart Arizona Cardinal team on the road. This is going to be a barn burner this week. I think this might be the game of the week. Look, you got the Lions having a uncharacteristic, unlion like performance, which is wild to say because we used to say same old Lions, and then they got good, and then we kind of forgot about that moniker. And then last week, the same old Lions sort of crept back into the picture, playing against an Arizona team that took Buffalo to the brink. They had my upset of the week last week. They've been so good this season. And uh, I, I just think that eventually their luck's going to run out, right? The, Detroit's a better team. In my opinion, they have better quarterback play. They have a better run game. I think Arizona might have the slight edge up front in, in terms of in, in terms of rush defense. Now, if Arizona wants to go and try to pass the pass the ball a lot, and Kyler Murray is going to run around, you better watch out because Aiden Hutchinson is a freak of nature, having a monster game last week against Tampa Bay, and I think he's the difference. I I I don't know if Arizona is really going to be able to get a run game off the ground. And then they have this weird hybrid passing game where Kyler Murray runs around a lot. He is not going to be able to do that against Aiden Hutchinson. Detroit wins this one on the road, getting a much-needed win. San Francisco and Los Angeles Rams play in L.A. this week. And as a Seahawks fan, whew, hey, we are blessed to have the schedule we have and have the health that we have because it could be – a lot worse. These two teams prove it. Both teams need constant doctors and medical staff with them at all times because you don't know which who's going to be the next person getting hurt on either one of these teams. San Francisco has so many injuries to key defensive and, and sort of specialty players with, with their uh, wide receivers getting hurt, playing against a, a Rams team who has multiple wideouts hurt, multiple linemen hurt. It's just going to be an ugly, ugly game. I think San Francisco's the better team, so I'm going to pick them to win against the Rams. And the Rams, 
postseason hopes are slowly fading away this early in the season. It's bizarre to say, but with Seattle possibly going to 3-0 and this week, Rams are going to have to do some serious soul-searching if they want to make the playoffs. Sunday Night Football features what is going to be my upset of the week. Yes, you heard it here. I can't believe I'm doing this. Kansas City travels to Atlanta to play the You Like That Falcons. I'm just giddy thinking about this. Kirk Cousins has arrived. And I said after week one, I hope that's not all Kirk Cousins is because he is a very efficient quarterback and Atlanta's got the weapons to make this thing go. And they were super aggressive in the offseason. And they traveled to Philly and just gutted out a win. And Kansas City sort of started the season off slow. I, I, I don't know what's going on over there. They had a very loud off season. It's, it's not really gelling like they thought it would. I think they're prime for an upset here. And I, and I just think Atlanta, with their offensive weapons, especially in the run game, is going to be opportunistic against a, 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 a Kansas City defense that does struggle at times to get off the field. I think this is going to be a shootout. I, and I think Kirk Cousins is up for the task. I know. Call me crazy. Sunday night football. It's prime time. It's Kirk Cousins. It's not supposed to work. I, this is just something inside of me saying pick Kirk Cousins. So he's my upset of the week. Atlanta. Atlanta beats the Kansas City Chiefs this week. Oh, man. I, I'm rooting for that upset so, so much this week. I hope Kirk's got it in him. Two Monday night football games round out week three. The first one being Jacksonville on the road against the Buffalo Bills. Look, uh, what what can be said about the Jacksonville Jaguars that haven't already been said? We hyped up Trevor Lawrence to be God on the football field leaving college, and I never really bought into that. But, man, he has just not been good, and he got paid right before the season began, which I thought was a terrible, terrible move from Jacksonville. Listen, this is the same Jacksonville Jaguar team that housed Blake Bortles, game manager at quarterback, but he took them to the AFC Championship game, got rid of him, had Garner Minshew on their team, who was, a again, a decent game manager, got rid of him, and now they have Trevor Lawrence, who, to be quite frank, due to his turnovers, isn't even a good game manager. I wonder what Jacksonville would look like if they would have kept Garner Minshew. They certainly would have had a lot more money on the books to spread around to some other talent. They're playing against the Bills that need a desperate win. And I think at home, Bills Mafia is going to go nuts trying to will their team for a win. I think home field matters in this one. I'm taking Buffalo first game of Monday Night Football. Then the last matchup, the Washington Commanders going after the Cincinnati Bengals in Cincinnati. Since he's, again, another AFC North team, struggle bussing the first week of the season. Thank goodness they got one team with a rookie quarterback coming into town. And I think Cincinnati's going to win this one pretty handedly. There's just too much talent around Joe Burrow to ignore. Washington's still trying to figure out who they are as Dan Quinn takes over the helm of that organization. And to be quite frank, the talent gap's just too big to pick an upset here. I think Cincinnati's going to win the last game of Week 3 fairly handedly over the Washington Commanders. And that's it for the Week 3 recap and predictions. I hope you enjoyed today. My name is Zach, and on this channel... We talk Seahawk football, and I will see you on Tuesday where I'm going to release the Week 3 show, hopefully talking about a Seahawk win over the Miami Dolphins. 3-0. and Could you imagine Seattle moving to 3-0? and Sole position of the NFC West crowned. And, ooh, endless possibilities in front of them as the season expands. 
This is a big, big week for this team. I hope you're as excited as I am. If you like what you see here on the channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. What do you think about Seattle and their expectations moving into week three? What are you excited for about this matchup? And uh, keep talking Hawks. Click on one of these videos that's going to pop up here. You might find something new to find here on YouTube. Uh, until we meet again, talk to you later. Bye.